Good evening to everyone. We thank God for his blessings. We thank God for his goodness. And we are grateful for all of you who are joining us. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. We are grateful for all things. And we're happy for all of you that are here on this evening. All right, let's get ready to pray and then we'll get started with our Bible study lesson for tonight. Dear God in heaven, we thank you again for all that you've done. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for your people. Lord, it was you that woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. We thank you, God, for life, health, our strength. We thank you for family members. Lord, how you've allowed so many to have gone to the job sites and children have gone to school and they have returned back to us. And we thank you, God, for keeping them. And then there were the rest of us, Lord. We didn't punch a clock, but we had business to tend to. And we've been in and out of our homes but you've kept us likewise. Thank you, God, for the church family, every person that's under the sound of my voice. We praise you now for your goodness, your mercy, your love. We praise you because you're God, and there is none like you. You are a great God. You are wonderful. God, you are worthy. All praises belong to you. Yes. I ask, Lord, that you will bless us this evening. We come, Lord, to another Bible study. Yes, we pray, Lord, that we learn of you through your word, yes. that our faith may be increased, Lord, that we have a better relationship with you, Lord, that we may do a greater work for you. Help us, Lord. Help us to have understanding, the knowledge that is needed, the wisdom that is needed. Anoint us, Lord. Yes. Anoint us to teach this evening. Give every person the heart to receive, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the saints now that you will help us, Lord, to strive even harder, that you will help us to stay the course, Lord, that we may, Lord, one day see you and see your face in peace. We know the time is shorter than has ever been before. We know, Lord, that we've got to leave this place. Either you're going to call us in or you're going to come and get us. And Lord, we must be ready. Yes, so help Lord. us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We want to go hire you. You better yes, to have a better relationship with you, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I'm asking that you will save the lost. We're concerned about family members, our children. We're concerned about others, oh God. Lord, the word has been taught to many of them. Stir their minds, Lord. Stir yes, their God. hearts. Yes, God. Yes, Give them a change of direction, Lord. Give them a mind to pray and to call on your name. Yes, Lord. Bind the hand of Satan. Make it take his hands off, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Save our children, Lord. Yes, God. Save, Lord, these young people that we've been praying for, that we've been ministering to, Lord. Yes, God. You know who they are, oh God. Deliver my God. Deliver in the name of Amen. Jesus, deliver in this city, the city of Greenville, and even other areas, Lord. People listening now, Lord, in different cities, deliver God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help the church, God. God, help the church that we may learn how to minister uh, to different people, Lord, in different situations. We need, Lord, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. We need that gift of prophecy, Lord. Oh, my God, use us for your will and for your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray for peace in this land. Yes, God. Lord, things are not so stable right now. Yes, and people are upset everywhere. We pray, Lord, that the situation in Minnesota, that it will be solved, oh, justice prevail, Lord, and that the people will not go out and riot and become violent. Lord, let things settle down. Bind the hand of Satan who, who wants to cause the disruption, want to cause instability and violent acts. Lord, bind his works, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for peace. We pray for deliverance. We pray for your hope, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Our soul to say yes. Yes to your will. 
Yes to your word. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the praises. We give you the honor. The honor. Just have your way in our souls, in our lives. Have your way, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, continue to bless. Continue to bless your people who are gathering here now, Lord, for this time of prayer and Bible study. You know, God, the needs of the people. You know our situation. You know what we're facing. God, there's some who are facing uh, problems at home and need deliverance, Lord, in the family. I pray for families tonight, Lord. Pray, Lord, for your deliverance and victory in your name. Oh, God, we pray that you will bless those that are bereaved. Touch right now, Lord. Touch the missionary, Frankie Griffin, Lord. Help her, Lord, in this time. Give us strength, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bless others, oh God. We continue to pray for the other green. Strengthen them, Lord. Again, there's so many others, Lord, that have not called the name, have lost loved ones within the past few months. Help them, oh God, on their everyday journey. In the name of Jesus, we're looking to you, God. We're looking to you for healing. God, you are a healer. It does not matter, Lord what the situation may be. We pray, God, for your deliverance of, of sick bodies. By your stripes, we are healed. And God, we're standing on that word and trusting you for our healing and our deliverance. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God. That precious blood, the blood of Jesus. Yes. Lord, heal tonight. Deliver, Lord. Heal from this COVID-19 virus, Lord. It's stricken so many person, their bodies, oh God, heal from other diseases, sicknesses, Lord. The enemy has brought upon your people. We look to you for our healing. We look to you for our deliverance. We look to you, Lord, to make us whole even physically. Then I pray, Lord, that you make us whole even mentally and emotionally. Yes. All the stress that, that, is, that is upon your people, we need your deliverance. Yes, Lord. Restore the peace Lord of the mind. Yes, Lord. The joy of the Lord, which, yes, is, Lord. which is our strength. We're looking to you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless now, Lord. Yes. The third person, oh God. That believe, oh God, the sin has come to the end. Help now, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Deliver, Lord. my God. You know who that person may be. Yes, Lord. Deliver now, God. We trust you, God. We trust your word, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bring us out of our difficulties, things that we've been praying for, God. Lord, that we may trust you the more. Yes, Believe and accept your word. We thank you. We just give you praise, give you glory, we give you honor in all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We honor the Lord on this evening. Thank God for all that he has done. And we're so grateful for all of you uh, who are with us on this evening. And uh, we want to go back to the subject that we had last week. Now, those on the email list you may be saying, well, Pastor, we don't have any uh, handouts or notes. And yes, you, you don't this time. His schedule has been a little full, and so I didn't uh, really get a chance to do what I've done in the past. But we're yet going to go on with this the same subject. Uh, the subject that we had last week was preparation for warfare, preparation for warfare, God's armor explained part. So now, please look at that subject preparation for warfare. We talked about the fact that we are indeed in a spiritual war. Mm -hmm. This war, one writer in a song said, cannot be won with bullets and guns, but it is a spiritual war. It is against our enemy, our adversary, the devil. Uh, I believe, what, does, does the word Satan mean adversary? I believe it does. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, he's our adversary. He's fighting us, <clears throat> excuse me, single with all that he has. And 
He's using his um, comrades, fallen angels, and demonic spirits or demons. There's a difference between demons and fallen angels. We talked about that in prior lessons, but they're all part of his kingdom. And if we're going to win, we certainly have to have the Lord on our side. We need the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. But we need to understand the armor of God. We need to understand what warfare is about. So our scriptures uh, that we read last week will come from Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 16. But tonight, uh, we're going to, well, let me say this. Last week, we dealt with verse 14 that talks about having your loins girded about with truth and, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's two of the things, the, the loins, which is a, a belt, all right? Uh, then the breastplate of righteousness. The loins is the belt. Well, I'm sorry. The, yes, the loins girt about with truth. That is, sometimes we refer to it last week as the loin belt, because oh, it is a belt. So, so Sister Riley's helping me out a little bit there with the terminology. So we talked about the loin belt, which in the scripture says your loins girt about the truth, having the breastplate of righteousness. So that would be the armor that is worn on the chest of a soldier. And then the verse 15 talks about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, of what you would wear on your feet. But now verse 16 is what we're going to concentrate on tonight. And this is what Paul said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. So, Sister Riley, yes. uh, I believe Carmen sent a picture of a Roman soldier to, to your email. I really wanted to look at that if we can, if, it, it won't take you long to pull it up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let, give us just a minute, we're gonna get started with the lesson. You keep talking, but, uh, I want you all to see a picture, uh, if we can, for just a moment, of of uh, what Paul probably had in mind. Here it is. Well, it's not on your screen yet, but it, it will be in just a minute. Uh, what Paul had in mind as he viewed uh, a Roman soldier, and if you give us a minute, it should be coming up momentarily. Is that that, that means it's on now? Share your screen. All right, we got to share the screen. So she's helping me here. And I think we she's about to share it. All right. I'm yeah. really through with it. Just hit stop share. Okay. Now here it is. This is a an artist's conception of a uh a Roman soldier in this particular day. And notice I'm using a little you notice the little Person. cursor. Mm -hmm. All right, we have talked about the breastplate of righteousness. So right here, while well, I'm drawing a little circle, right in this area here, is, is to protect the soldier's chest. All right, then we also talked about his feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel. Now, this picture is not the best, but I did, you, you can see the greens that are here. And this just look like an ordinary sandal, but it's not. The material on this man's foot is much thicker than just an ordinary sandal. Uh, and then you cannot see the spikes uh, that are on this person's foot. So we, we talked about uh, those things last week. Oh, and then the lion or lowen, I won't say lion, the lowen belt is right here, which you cannot see that clear, okay? Now tonight, we want to talk about the shield of faith. So look how big this shield is. And you're going to find out why this shield is so large. And in Roman times, what they actually made the shield out. And so as uh, Paul was given his revelation by the Spirit of the Lord, you know, the Spirit of God will work with what you have at your disposal, what knowledge you have. And Paul, who uh, had seen these Roman soldiers many times, who were very impressive 
uh, and what they had on. And he knew why they wore these different parts of their armor, because we're looking at the subject again, preparation for warfare, God's armor explained. Uh, as we look, first of all, naturally, or at a physical, from a physical standpoint, then we can look at what we ought to have on spiritually, the armor of the Lord that we ought to have on that we uh, be able uh, to fight in this day's time. We really need to understand warfare and understand what to do at this time. So the shield of faith, let's talk about the shield of faith. And I, I'm using those for a particular book here, but this shield that we were looking at just a moment ago, that, that shield, one author says, uh, is inseparable uh, from the lowing belt. The belt, remember that, that the soldiers wore around so that he could keep his, uh, well, his garment in a particular place so they wouldn't get in the way of him fighting. But also in terms of the shield, there was a clip on that. You can, and, and some of you all ought to be familiar with a clip that people wear on their belt today. There was a clip on this soldier's belt that held or linked this massive shield uh, to this belt. Now remember now, the, the lawn belt, if you go back to the scripture and you look at what is that? That is verse uh, 14 that talks about, uh, well, let's see here, having your lawn dirt about the truth, yes. Yes, your lawn, which is the, the, the lawn belt. We said the truth would be what? The word of God. And so this author, uh, he says that, that the lawn belt, which is the represent the written word of God, it is attached to your shield of faith. In other words, if you are going to have faith, then there's got to be attachment to the word of God. It is by hearing and hearing the word of God that our faith is increased. You're not going to do too well with the shield of faith. In other words, have that faith that's going to shield you from the attacks of the devil if you do not have the word of God. And that would be what? The lowering belt. All right? You're not going to do too well. You must, and this is what, listen, this is why. And, and, and I don't know why we can't get people to understand this, but this is why it's so important that you go to Sunday school, that you go to Bible class. I know the word is preached on Sundays by the pastor who preaches. And of course, if he's a servant of the Lord, he's getting a message from God. But besides the, the messages, the preaching that is done on Sunday morning, you need to be taught the word of the Lord. And that's where Sunday school and Bible class is so vital. And people do not want to go to Sunday school. They do not want to go to Bible class. I, I guess because it does not seem to be as exciting as a Sunday morning service where you may be, uh, there may be a little bit more shouting, uh, the emotional high, the choir scene, there's good singing and there's good music where the Bible class and Sunday school, it goes at a slower pace and that's on purpose that things can sink in and you really grasp the word of the Lord that's going to do what? It's going to build your faith. Now let's look at the shield of faith. Let's, let's go a little bit further with the shield of faith. There were two kinds of shields that the Roman soldiers used. And uh, you know, the New Testament is written in Greek and so that you have two Greek words. One of the Greek words was uh, was apus, and apus, uh, when that particular word was used, it, that that really was speaking of a small round shield. Now the one I showed you a minute ago was not the apus, because in that small round shield, which was much much smaller than what you saw in that picture a, a moment ago, it was used for a decorative or a ceremony, for ceremonial purposes, all right? Uh, it would be used in parades. 
the Roman soldier looked good many times in his outfit. And these soldiers are just like uh, in some country now, armies are marching to show their might. The Roman soldier did that same thing. So he would use that small shield as a decorative piece uh, when there were parades. But the shield that you saw uh, on that picture a moment ago, the one that's used on the battlefield comes from a Greek word, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, uh, theros, which is spelled T-H-U-R-E-O-S. And that word was a Greek word to refer to a door. Listen to this, a door that was wide and long. This shield was made like a door. It was huge, it was long, it was wide so that the soldier would be able to defend himself, not only from the opposer with a sword, but a, a spear that would be thrown, and also when arrows were shot. This shield was large enough, uh, in many cases, uh, large enough to almost cover the entire soldier. And one writer said, that what the Spirit of God was really trying to convey through Paul was that God has given us enough faith to make certain that we are completely covered. Did you hear that? He's given enough faith to make certain that we are completely covered. Every believer has to have faith. Now, there are different measures of faith. Romans 12 and 3. God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Our faith needs to grow. But he has given you faith. The Bible lets us know what our faith is impossible to please God. So when you become a believer, he has given you faith. And he's given you enough faith to cover. Now, it's up to you to learn how to use God's armor. In this case here, the shield of faith that will protect us from those things that the enemy, the devil, will launch against us. Let's look at these, these, these shields that the Roman soldiers used again. Let's talk about how they were made. Uh, they, his, his shield was made up of multiple layers, usually six layers of leather. So they would take six different la layers of leather. You know, the, the hide of an animal is very thick in many cases, and it is very uh, doable. And they would have six of these layers that they would take and, and they would weave them together and make them very tight. And, and, and when, when you would do that, that would be a very strong bond. That leather would be stretched and, and uh, it would be fixed on some type of a, of a frame. I don't know whether it was a wooden frame or a, a metal frame but whatever frame it was stretched on, it was a very doable piece of equipment. Your faith that you have in God, that shield of faith, it ought to be strong, it ought to be long lasting, it ought to be very doable. Now, you know, if you think about leather, uh, leather has to be taken care of. Uh, in, in our automobiles, that we have leather seats and the leathers on the door and maybe on the dashboard. If you don't take care of that leather, soon it's gonna have some cracks in it. And so we buy stuff like armor oil, that sort of oily substance that you rub into your seats and on the dashboard because the heat of the sun over, the, over a period of time will cause cracks in that leather. All right, well, these soldiers, uh, their shield that's made out of those six layers of leather, uh, after a period of time, the leather will become stiff and it starts, it, it, it can have some uh, holes that are what? That are actually going to come in the shield, which uh, will be a problem if you're on the battlefield. You got a shield that's got holes in it or that's breaking, that's breaking up. So what did the soldiers do? They would, each day, in order to maintain your shield, you would get a, uh, a vial of oil, a little bottle 
He got oil and he would take that oil and he would rub it into the shield. To keep the shield from becoming hard that, would, that uh, would cause it to what? To stop breaking and hold being pointed. And he would do that every day. Now a soldier who did not do this would be in trouble on the battlefield. So here's a good example of what we must do as believers in God. We need, as one author said, the frequent anointing of the Holy Ghost. We need a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, when you get saved, that's not all to it. You, you, if you're going to continue to live on this earth, and all of us want to continue to live, if we're going to continue to live on this earth to be saved, we must seek the Lord, and we, we need to do so on a daily basis that we are renewed. Our minds are renewed. Our spirits are renewed. But in this case, we're talking about the shield of faith, that we get this fresh anointing. Because, see, the reason we, we, can, we can bring in the anointing here the Holy Ghost who does the anointed is symbolized by all, all right, in the scripture. It's symbolized by all. So uh, just as the soldier would apply this oil every day as believers so that we won't have any holes in our equipment, this, this shield of faith that is our, our defense mechanism, then we need the Holy Ghost to anoint us and, and actually anoint us on a daily basis. Not only did the Roman soldiers rub oil into their shield, but before the uh, soldier would go out to battle, the night before, he would take his shield and place it under water, a uh, tub or probably some stream and it was left there so that it would soak the water and, and be completely saturated. Now, why was that? In those days, you find that the enemy many times would shoot arrows, all right? They would shoot arrows that were on fire. The, the, the tip of that arrow was on fire. I know this is a scripture that we, we're dealing with on tonight. Verse 16 says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. All right? So just as the enemy was shooting uh, physical fiery dots or arrows that were, that were uh, aflame, the enemy, in, in, in a spiritual matter, is shooting fiery darts at you. And so in order to maintain your shield of faith, then you need some water, all right? Uh, Ephesians 5 and 26 talks about the washing of water by the word. The word of the Lord is compared to, in many scriptures, to water. And so here again is the importance of the word of the Lord itself, all right? We are not going to make it. We are not going to make it unless we have the word of God. We need God's word. This is why, again, Bible study is important. But not only is Bible study important, it is important that you have a particular time of, of the day to meditate, to read God's word, to meditate on his word, and let the spirit of God minister to your spirit. It's important. Many of us are not reading or taking the time to read God's word. And I know we 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 are uh, we, we're quite busy. I know that uh, my schedule now seemingly uh, is, is 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 more occupied than ever before. I tell folks that in in the pandemic, as pastor, I'm working harder now in this time of the pandemic than I was before the pandemic. I have to do more preparation. I have to do other things that maybe I would not have had to have done if the pandemic had not hit us. So my schedule is quite busy, but I have to read God's word, all right? Not just for me to teach and to preach,
but I need a word from the Lord for my personal life. You need a word from the Lord. I, I dare you to just really meditate on God's word. And as you begin to do so, you see, it is, it is the word of God, his written word uh, that actually does what? That actually uh, uh, is what is being spoken to you. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at a uh, message that, that is here. And uh, one person said, said, we have double talk and a repeat of everything that's being said. Uh, what about the rest of y'all? I'm looking at some of y'all on Zoom. I can see your faces. Are you clear? Zoom is fine. Zoom is fine. Okay. All right. Those of you that are on, uh, those of you that are on, on Facebook, are you having problems of hearing me? Is there an echo? Somebody just let me know in the comment section in a few minutes. I know we got a little delay uh, in Facebook. So let me know. Sometimes uh, when we're doing these, these uh, teachings, sometimes it, it, it may be uh, one person in particular. Okay, I see one person say Facebook is okay. So Sister Marilyn, check your uh, settings or something, maybe something there with your phone. Sometimes it happens where individually uh, you, there may be a bad connection, but a certain one to check to see if it was clear with most of y'all. Okay, let me get back to what we were saying here. Thank you, Sister Marilyn, for letting me know. And anybody else, please let us know because we didn't know how we're coming out. But anyway, this this shield uh, that we're talking about, if we, if we go from the standpoint of the Roman soldier, then we need to what? The Roman soldier had to take time to take care of his shield, the oil and water. If he does it to fight a natural enemy, then we must do this to fight our spiritual enemy. We must take care of our shield of faith. And if you're going to do this, you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost and you need the water of his word. Just the word of God itself. This is, again, water is symbolizing the word itself. Now, Let's let let let's go a little bit further with it. Notice this scripture said again. It said, "Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked." Some people have interpreted this, this when they look at the scripture starts off with uh, "above all," thinking that the shield of faith was the most important, and that's not the case. If if any part of this outfit would be the most important. It might be the lower belt that's about the midsection of the body on the soldier. All right, because that is the word of God itself. But the uh, you gotta understand again that the Bible is written in Greek. So the phrase above all, it really, that phrase really means all or everything. And I'm reading what this author uh, it, it's telling you that it's the position of your shield where it needs to be placed. It needs to be out front. One writer said it could be better translated out in front of all or covering all. Now we know that the Bible again is written in Greek. And so when the, the apostle wrote his epistles, they understood exactly you know, sometimes we have to dig a little deeper to see what is being meant because we have translation from the original language. But from these scholars, they're saying that when he, when he talked about above all, he's really saying out in front of all that. In other words, you think about a soldier, and I'm a right-handed person, most people are right hand. The, the, the shield will come out what? First. That's for your protection to what? To Cover. So it's talking about a the position of the shield. It's got to be in the correct place if you're going to what? If you're going to win in the battle. No soldier can go out on the battlefield without a shield. And then the shield has to be in the proper place. All right. Now why? 
Because look at the scripture again. Let me read it again. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. The devil, who is the wicked one in the scripture, he's going to fire or he's going to launch or shoot his fiery darts. All right. And that word darts, the Greek word, is really talking about arrows that were equipped to carry fire. In my study, there were three types of arrows. There was the regular arrow that had no fire at all. Okay, you know, the bow and arrow, you shoot the arrow. The second one was an arrow that was dipped into tar. Dipped it in tar, then you set it in the fire and it would shoot it in the air. Then there was a third type of arrow that they used that contained a combustible fluid that burst into flames upon impact. I did not know they had something uh, in ancient time that would do that, but it was an arrow that uh, whatever they made that arrow out of, it had a fluid that as it hit the target, it would burst out into flames. So, so they believed that these fiery dots was really speaking of the third arrow, but I could see where it could have been the second one as well that was dipped in tar and set on fire. So the arrow is coming at you, uh, is it either set on fire from the beginning or when it hits you, it's going to just what? It's somewhat just blow up and now you have a fire. And why would they do that? Because listen, if you were in a fortified place, if you were behind a massive wall, like a castle or a wall of fortification, uh, that was hard for the enemy to scale the wall. If he has enough archers with these combustible arrows, what are they going to do? They're going to shoot over the wall. All right. And once the arrow comes over the wall and hits its target, then there's a flame, a fire that's going to break out. And, and one of them I was reading, he said that sometime when the, when the enemy saw the archers come and say, you know, if they're behind the wall, they, they, they might have thought it was harmless. It, it, it might have thought it was that first cycle of the arrow. But when those arrows started coming, it was like a bomb. These were the bombs of the ancient world. Think about what a fire does. A fire will stir up things. Because if it's a combustible arrow, and that arrow comes over the wall, and, 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 and you know, we have walls in this life that we have built up. If you think about in ancient time, uh, remember Nehemiah went back home to Jerusalem to build a wall for protection. God has so designed that uh, for us to have walls for our protection. But the enemy, he's an intelligent person, so he wants to shoot some arrows over the wall. And he's going to do just that by barren arrows. And guess what he does? He wants to shoot these arrows into your emotions. He wants to shoot these arrows in what he has determined to be the weak places of your life. How about the weak places of your mind, the weak places of your heart? You know, you, you at Little Valley have heard me teach that there is not an all-knowing devil. So what does he do? He sits back. He observes you. He listens to your conversation. This is why you have no business going around talking about if, if such and such a thing happened to me, I don't know what I would do. Or if this happened to me, this is what I'm going to do. If she get in my face, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. Or if he come at me, I'm just going to put my religion on the shelf and go on and take care of business. If you got a religion that you can put on the shelf, you don't have very much. And, and really, when you talk about this way of holiness, it's not a religion as such. It, it, anyway, it is a way of life. But see, but people talk that way. They talk those foolish uh, things. And, and the devil sits back. He listens to all of this. And then he does the thing to aggravate you to see how you will react. And when he can figure you out what makes you tick, so to speak, or what makes you become fearful, maybe, then that's when he starts shooting. And he's looking for a weak spot. So he shoots these fiery darts at you. Uh, 
He shoots them into your emotions to get you into a state of rage, anger, anxiety. How about unbelief, worry? He does that. These combustible arrows, these fiery dots to start a flame in your life. And he's hoping that the flame will be will become such that it is out of control. You know, you think about anger. If the Bible says, be you angry and sin not, if you become angry and you do not control the anger, that is a, a fire uh, that would be what? Out of control. Uh, that fire might be uh, the tongue. Paul talked about uh, how that little member, it's a little member, but, but it can be a great fire. It can be a thing that can really set off a fire that would be very dangerous. So we have to understand what the devil is doing. See, now look at this, saints. Uh, people that are really saved, the enemy knows he cannot come at you in the beginning to cause you to go out into the streets to do something wild and crazy. He knows that uh, you understand that doing drugs is wrong, uh, that, that drinking is wrong, and all these other things that uh, that the Bible condemns. So he does not necessarily, in his attempt to get you on the battlefield, he does not necessarily come at you like that. But what he does do, he comes with trials. He comes with things to disappoint you. He comes with things to discourage you. He's trying to steal your joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So if he can steal your joy, shoot the flames at Get your emotions all out of whack, and you fear for you. You're angry. Uh, you you are uh, in a rage. You're worried, anxiety. If he can do that and steal your joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Then you don't have the power to resist him when he comes with another temptation. Just in that manner, a person that is discouraged, that is, I'm, I'm giving an example, that becomes disappointed. Well, it was a, it's a man, he just disappointed, he just disturbed, looked like nobody's giving him any attention. Then he sends this beautiful woman his way, and she looked like she just got the time, all the time in the world to listen to his, to, uh, his sad stories. Uh, it seemed like she comforts him, you know, a, a friend, and, and the devil, what he does, he just sets you up for the ball because then the suggestion uh, of adultery, fornication comes in there, and he has you exactly where he wants you. But notice how it started off. Starts off with one of these fiery dots that that sets a fire um, that that really uh, becomes out of control in your life. So we have to understand how important this shield of faith, this faith that we need to have to shield us from the attacks of the devil. See, the, the, the goal of the enemy is to shoot this arrow. He wants to shoot an arrow of unbelief in your mind. He wants you to doubt God. He wants to put you in a position where you just don't believe God is able to deliver you. You just don't, don't see God bring you out of, uh, out of the situation. And so he will shoot all these arrows and he wants to hit your mind with an arrow of unbelief. So we've got to have our shield. We talked about the fact that it, you need to have a fresh anointing. We talked about the water of the word. We, we cannot allow the devil to seize our mind, paralyze us with, with fear. Remember now, in my teaching, when I talk about the soul of man, you know, you have spirit, soul, and body, but it's the soul that has three parts. And one of those parts of your soul, it is your mind. If he gets control of the mind, then the second part of your soul, which is the will of man, your volition, where you just make decisions and your decisions are to do right or wrong. If he gets control of your mind, then you won't have the will to do right. He gets control of the mind, then he, he, he's working on that, those emotions those emotions that uh, if they're out of whack, 
They would cause you to feel unwanted, unloved. Uh, you, you even think that God does not love you, that God does not care about you. The last thing I'm going to talk about in the shield of faith and looking at the soldier and, and, and the Roman soldier would be the corporate faith in the church. The corporate, corporate faith in the church. Corporate means the whole body, all right, in this instance. Uh, what Roman soldiers were threatened by the enemy, it was a massive attack. Guess what they would do? They would, they would have long lines right and left of, of the soldiers with a long line. They would be side by side because those shields had small hinges. And what they would do as they got close together, they would hook these shields together, fasten them together, where the, 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 the whole group could hide under the shield as the arrows were coming out of the sky. And having those shields hooked together made it very difficult for the enemy's arrows to actually shoot in the back. Because remember now, the arrows supposed to, I mean, the, the shield is supposed to be all to keep the holes from uh, breaking for, and it's supposed to have water, soaked in water. So when, when the, if that arrow hit the shield, it would, the, the fire would be put out. It would not be able to ignite and explode if it's one of those combustible arrows. And so uh, if it was a massive attack, they would stay together for the protection of everybody. And that's where, you know, that, that's an example of the church today. We as the church need to march together. We need to stay connected to one another. We, we talked about this throughout the pandemic. And Sister Riley said this so many times. You got to stay connected. For those that uh, right now find it, hard for you to come into the sanctuary because of the pandemic and you're concerned about your health and so forth. You got to stay connected. Stay connected. God has provided us with uh, the means of coming on with Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube and other matters. But then those of us that are coming out of our home, some of us have taken our vaccines and so forth. You still got to stay connected. We can become apathetic. We can become unconcerned, slowful where we don't have a desire to come to church. That's exactly what the devil wants because he knows that if you're by yourself, it is easy to, to shoot you with that arrow. But if I'm connected, I'm, my shield of faith is, is tied into my neighbors, it is connected, and we're praying for one another, we're encouraging one another, we're seeing about one another, it makes it harder for the enemy to be successful in his attack. And, and let me see, can I kind of end it on that particular note? Because what I do want to say to you, we announced this on uh, last night, that this coming Sunday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're going to do a prayer revival in Little Valley. On Sunday evening, we want to come back at 5 o'clock. Uh, on Monday evening, Tuesday, I think we're going to do six o'clock. Uh, I'm looking at 40 to 45 minutes. Not going to be long, but the Lord has given me that it's time for the saints to come together in corporate prayer. I know we pray on Facebook, but the prayer on Facebook is, is, is different than corporate prayer on our knees in the sanctuary. We're going to go there. We're yet going to be socially distant, distance, have social distance between us. Uh, we, we're going to take precautions. We will uh, spray the church. We, we plan to have church Sunday morning. So in between the two services, it'll be fall. It'll be sprayed way before it's time for the uh, prayer service. Uh, the cleaning crew, I will give some instructions for them where they can do some things to help us uh, during this time. And uh, we will not be there just long, long time unless the spirit of the lord says something differently but i think the lord has given me the time period and we're going to pray we're going to pray we're not going to call you and have you congested around the altar like we have done in other prayer time because we're in the pandemic but when we stand to give god the praise we would do that from our seats i'm looking for the lord to meet us listen uh the bible says that is the prayers of the righteous that are barely much 
And I just believe if, if we come together, I believe there is a blessing for you. There is a blessing for the middle of the valley. We are going to cry out to the Lord on the behalf of this nation. We're going to cry out about situations that are in our lives. Um, some, we need some breakthrough. We, we need God to hear our cry. And I believe God is going to do it in this prayer revival. We're going to be fasting. Those that can and will these three days. Sunday to fast, at least after the service on Sunday morning. Those two days will go longer. If you can to three o'clock, those that can't go that long, go as long as you can. And let's seek the Lord that he will move in our midst and that he will do something wonderful for his people and to do something for this nation because this nation needs deliverance. So we're looking for the Lord to deliver and we're looking for the Lord to bless. We're doing that uh, Monday, I'm sorry, Sunday evening, Monday, Tuesday evening. Uh, we will yet have our, our Facebook and, and Zoom feed for those who cannot be here. There's some people who, who are with us uh, who live out of town. We will, we will have the feed up for you. You may not, you may not see us as such because we're going to be out on these crying out to God. So it may be a picture there, but you will definitely hear us. And you can pray there in your home with us as we cry out to the Lord. All right. I didn't get a chance to type this lesson up. Uh, let, well, I guess because uh, I, I did a little different on tonight. Anybody got any questions? Anybody want to ask a question right quick? If you're on Zoom, you can unmute and ask your question. If you're on Facebook, we're looking at the Facebook feed. You can, you can put it in the comment section if there's a question about something that we said on tonight. Any, any question? All right. Well, I hope that you have gotten something out of this lesson. I hope that it's been a blessing to you. And let's continue to study the word of the Lord. Uh, the Lord said the same on next week. We're going to continue our preparation for warfare. God's armor. We're going to look at the last two pieces, uh, hopefully on next week. And uh, I, I hope that by then I can have the lesson typed out and we hear some of them, hear your responses and comments and so forth. We're going to try to hopefully have it organized in that matter next week. The Lord bless you. We look to see Little Valley on Sunday morning, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock for Sunday school, 1030 for our morning worship service. The Lord bless. Y'all stay safe. And let's continue to pray for the oh yes, little Nevada. Y'all continue to pray for Brother Maxwell. Very ill. Very, very ill. And, and, but we believe God can do anything. We believe in miracles. Also pray for the missionary Frankie Griffin who lost her son on this morning. We are praying uh, for certainly our sister. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you until the next time.